second panelist is Alexander Pavlovich from Institute for Philosophy and Social Theory uh, with the topic Neonational Romanticism in Serbia Education. Uh, Sasha, the time is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Do I need to call this? <laughs> okay. Perhaps. Okay. Uh, well, in this paper, basically we argued that there are striking similarities between Serbian education and textbooks uh, today from those and those from the times of romantic nationalism in the late 19th century. And uh, in our discussion, we will first uh, outline romantic national concept of education as it has been in use in Serbia in the late 19th century. Uh, as we submit in these pre-World War I Serbian textbooks, the pupils were taught that language is the basic uh, and obvious proof of common origin and past, uh, that the nation is a natural form of, of grouping people, and that basically uh, language is the proof of uh, uh, people's unity, and that people should naturally uh, aspire to all members uh, speaking one language should naturally aspire to live in one exclusive national state. Uh, we will illustrate this point by taking into consideration uh, a history reader for elementary schools written by Mihailo Jovic. This was the most popular textbook in, I think, the entire history of Serbian education. It was in use from 1880 all the way to the Second World War, so in the period of 60 years. Um, and for illustration purposes, uh, we will just show several points that he makes about uh, Albanians in the textbook to illustrate the perspective. And in the second part of, of our paper, we compare these romantic national ideas of education with the current Serbian history readers for primary and secondary school. And in particular, we will illustrate our point by focusing on the uh, 1999 NATO campaign and 1998-1999 Serbian-Albanian conflict uh, as a parallel to how Jovic writes about Albanians in uh, his textbook. And lastly, we will close our talk uh, by basically just mentioning one example of an alternative textbook that has been produced in the last uh, decade or so and uh, see how it uh, attempts to uh, depart from the from this uh, approach still dominant in Serbia that we labeled in the um, in the title as uh, neo uh, roman neo national romanticism or neo romantic nationalism in Serbian education okay uh, Education of students in the spirit of nationalism, of course, has a long history. Uh, the idea of nation as formative for the community and as the highest achievement uh, in the evolution of mankind was firmly established in the 19th century. Uh, and scholars have for long observed uh, that education at the time of Romanticism had a role and function of national coherence and uh, national unity. And uh, while Romantic nationalism ideas affected Serbia already in the early 19th century, one could say that Serbs from, from uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire show signs of uh, this new European emerging nationalism already in the late 18th century. It's easy to discuss how uh, early 19th century Serbian uprisings were also a, a, a sort of uh, awakening of national consciousness in the in the spirit of, uh, of nation, new spirit of nationalism. These ideas actually affected education only from 1880s onwards, which means only after Serbia has been recognized as an independent state, which happened in 1878 at the Berlin Congress. After 1878, Serbia formed sort of a, a educational council, ministry, and so on, which uh, uh, introduced mandatory education and with mandatory education 
which was of course mandatory on the elementary level, uh, there was a first organ, state organized production properly of textbooks. Uh, and uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time discussing the overall perspective. Uh, we don't need to be detectives or conduct some kind of really thorough work to understand what the goals of the education of the time were. So it's really easy just to uh, take into consideration several uh, um, exemplary statements. Stojan Novaković, who was uh, Minister of Education at some point and a reformer and one of the most influential figures uh, in the late 19th century in the field of Serbian education, uh, he gave one speech in 1881 uh, in which he emphasized that education is the crucial factor in the unification of Serbia. You know, that, that was his proclaimed goal. And uh, um, if we take into consideration, as I mentioned, Mihailo Jovic's Serbian history, uh, it also illustrates this overall framework. Already in the foreword, when you open this little, little primer, uh, he advised the pupils to always, so, so he says like, I'm writing this book, this, this textbook for you, so that you children can always be heroes like Obilić and the highwayman Veljko. And that also, these are like great heroes from Serbian recent and medieval history. And uh, then if you look at, let's say, official documents, uh, it is instructive to see, for example, methodical instructions of the Ministry of Education, which gave points to teachers what they should achieve. And one of those uh, uh, methodical instruction says that Serbian history education is expected to inspire love for our nation and feelings that would strengthen the will for heroic moral actions. So I think it's pretty straightforward how they imagine the role of education in the late 19th century. Um, I mentioned Jovic and his textbook. Um, it is also instructive that he himself shared this view. In one very late interview given in 1931, so basically almost 50 years after his uh, uh, textbook was in use, he says, you know, with certain pride that this text was, was even forbidden by Austro-Hungarian authorities and that it had to be printed elsewhere and that he had problems in the beginning. And he says, again, I'm quoting, all those generations that took part in recent wars learned the history of their nation from this little book of mine. So in a way, it inspired them with patriotism and that patriotism enabled them to fight these great wars and be uh, uh, victorious in, uh, against the you know, foreign powers. And his contemporary colleague called Milenko Vukicevic, who was also a history textbook author and uh, a kind of supervisor for the Minister of Education, he also confirms that the greatest success has been achieved there where children used his book. So this book was considered to be very successful in uh, achieving the ideals proclaimed by the ministry and if you want, in Foucauldian sense, the, the educational discourse of the time. Um, I will skip a few parts. I will just illustrate just a few passages so you can have a, a sense of how lessons uh, were written and what the narrative contained. For example, I took here uh, three passages from various editions in the span of 15 years. And uh, in all of these editions, he of course mentions the Great Migration, which was uh, one of the most significant events in Serbian history, where significant Serbian population and the seat of the Serbian church, so basically uh, the de facto leadership, ed you know, educated and, and wealthy Serbs that remained within the Ottoman Empire, decided to move to, the, to, to Hungary at the time, basically, uh, uh, austro yeah, Habsburg Empire at the time. And what he says, talking about the Great Migration, he mentions Albanians in uh, each instance, and basically he says how 
after the migration, Albanians who were not present in Kosovo were settled by the Turks. So maybe we can discuss whether this is overtly uh, uh, negative or nationalistic, or it is simply implied, but uh, it is at some, to some level illust illustrative of his general perspective. In a later uh, uh, edition, which again followed certain events where antagonism between Serbia and its neighbors was uh, uh, getting currency, he shifts the sentence a little bit and says that after the great migrations, the Turks settled the, the Albanians on their place, and these Albanians did greater evils to Serbs than the Turks themselves, you know. And if I had more time to show you how he describes Turks in the previous passages with the impalement and torture and everything, one would really, you know, wonder what is worse than the Turks? You know, how can you be worse than the Turks? You know, this reminds me, I need, I need to say, I, I, know, I don't know if you know the, the life of Brian, uh, and there is this scene when this guy is uh, accused to be stoned because he used the word Jehovah, which is a sacrilege. And then he's just, you know, before he's getting stoned, he says, Jehovah, Jehovah. And they say, you know, you're going to be punished. He says, what's worse? What's there worse than being stoned? You know, so at least I can say, okay, this was completely unnecessary digression. Okay, so let us move to the present. Um, I think this was enough for illustration of uh, Serbian educational system and this romantic nationalist romantic national approach to, to education and its purposes. If we look at Serbian education now uh, and ask to what extent did things change today, on the level of proclaimed goals, on the level of uh, uh, methodical instructions that the Ministry of Education and relevant bodies uh, promote nowadays, one would say that things uh, changed profoundly. And I've picked here two probably most common instructions that you can find in uh, uh, ministry uh, manuals and in very often being used in the annual programs that lecturers themselves make. And also in those publications that are used as uh, textbooks, but that are designed as instructions for teachers. So this is these quotations are by no means <clears throat> my extrapolation. It's, they are as representative as possible. And I'll read it, give me just a minute. So the goal of teaching history as understood nowadays is acquiring humanistic education and developing historical consciousness, understanding historical space and time, historical events, manifestations and processes, and the role of distinguished persons developing individual and national identity, acquiring and expanding knowledge, developing skills, and forming attitudes necessary to understand the contemporary world in the national, regional, European, and global context, improving functional skills and competencies necessary for living in contemporary society, investigative skills, critical and creative thinking, ability to express and argument personal attitudes, understanding multiculturality, advancing tolerance and culture of dialogue based on arguments. So <clears throat> our claim is that on the level of declare, declared goals, things really look peachy, you know. Uh, another similar publication offers, offers a piety uh, uh, goal in a, in a sentence. History teaching should contribute to understanding historical space and time, historical events, manifestations and processes, as well as to developing national and European identity and the spirit of tolerance among the pupils. Now, our argument is once we move to the actual content of textbooks, the picture tends to, to uh, depart rather significantly. And it especially is the case when we are uh, seeing how recent traumatic events from the 1990s have been uh, presented in uh, textbooks. And to illustrate this point, uh, we are quoting several relevant passages about the interpretation of Serbian-Albanian conflict in Kosovo from 1998 and 1999, and the subsequent uh, 
NATO bombing of Yugoslavia, which took place in spring 1999. And we are limiting here quotations only to one textbook uh, written by George Djuric and Momčilo Pavlović. I think first edition is from 2010, and it is still in use, so it is probably the most popular, the most widely used book, uh, uh, history textbook uh, in uh, nowadays. I made here a chart. I don't know if you can actually uh, read it properly, but for example, uh, when it comes to the Serbian-Albanian conflict and the NATO bombing, <clears throat> when you open this textbook, you see that uh, Serbian textbook says that daily armed actions by Albanian terrorist groups called Kosovo Liberation Army, brigandry and conflicts with the forces of law and order in which many civilians were killed caused extreme deterioration of the situation in Kosovo. And then the textbook goes on to say that finally, Western forces, especially United States, got involved. They gave open uh, uh, support to the Albanians. After failure of uh, Rambuya negotiations and refusal of Serbian side to sign ultimatum about withdrawal of war, army and police from Kosovo, uh, what followed was NATO aggression that lasted uh, from March to June. So this is uh, verbatim how this textbook describes these events. Uh, I'm not going to pick sides here a lot, but I will use one compar comparable Albanian textbook used, by, uh, used in Kosovo just to see how history is presented, uh, the same events, how they are presented completely differently. So in the Serbian textbook, you see that it was the uh, Albanian terrorists that caused the deterioration of the situation in Kosovo. In uh, Kosovo textbook, they say that massacres by the Serbian regime across Kosovo inspired the emergence of the Kosovo Liberation Army to protect the people of Kosovo. This is what the Kosovo Liberation Army wanted to do. Uh, when we take a look at the events described, uh, the war between Serbs and Albanians and the NATO bombing, a uh, Serbian textbook doesn't mention a single Albanian uh, killed by Serbian Yugoslav forces during this conflict. Whereas Albanian textbook mentions uh, not a single Serb that has been killed uh, during during this conflict. And uh, if we take a look at 1998, before how events are described, before the NATO bombing, which was in 1999, uh, Serbian textbook man doesn't provide any figure about how many people were killed in 1998, uh, either Albanians or Serbs. Whereas Kosovo textbook says that more than 2,000 Albanians were killed and not counting here a large number of missing persons. Now I added here independent with a question mark, but independent sources, which are like uh, uh, human, uh, uh, humanitarian, Center for Humanitarian Law, Center for Humanitarian Law, which is situated in, in Belgrade and it had a really long history of trying to count every victim already in the Bosnian war. So they present uh, the, I think the most reliable source of information about uh, 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 actual victims during these conflicts. So uh, in 1998, Serbian textbook says nothing. Albanian says more than 2000 Albanians were killed plus uh, unspecified number of uh, 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 missing persons, kidnapped. Uh, reliable sources say 1,600 Albanians killed, including almost 700 soldiers, and around 300 Serbs being killed at the time, uh, out of which over half were Yugoslav army and police members, and maybe 14% were civilians. Uh, 
Then, when they're talking about Albanian casualties, especially in 1999, uh, as I said, Serbian textbook gives no figure at all. Uh, whereas, Alba Albanian textbook says that during the NATO bombing, so in, during the 70-something days, uh, Serbian army killed approximately 15,000 Albanians. Uh, whereas, again, Human Rights Watch uh, records in the three years of conflict, from 1998 to, to the end of 2000, uh, overall, less than 8,000 Albanians uh, killed. This applies to people killed in 1998, during the Serbian-Albanian conflict, during the NATO bombing, and after NATO came, you know that Kosovo Liberation Army committed atrocities even to its own population, which has been a subject of the of this you know, special court and these indictments, and uh, let's not go into that overall. So you see the huge discrepancy between these, these uh, figures, especially when it comes to uh, Albanians. Both sides tend to mention only victims from their own side, and uh, one cannot, be, cannot differ more in terms of uh, how you interpret causes of, of these events. So to sum up, I hope that we managed to exemplify that once we move from the proclaimed goals of current Serbian textbooks, uh, the depiction of recent traumatic historical events in Serbian history textbooks actually corresponds more to early romantic national ideas than contemporary and proclaimed ones about nourishing critical approach, various perspectives, and other sides' views and promoting more inclusive and tolerant identity or identities. And after conducting a comprehensive analysis of Serbian textbooks overall, uh, several Serbian and international scholars uh, concluded that these examples that we provided are not actually isolated cases, but in, in fact a dominant perspective. And I'm quoting here Dubravka Stojanovic, who is uh, a rather uh, uh, well-known authority in terms of uh, Serbian textbooks. Uh, she tends to be quite critical, but uh, she does say that basically uh, history textbooks, I'm quoting, develop a paranoid model of historical consciousness that can provide a solid foundation for hatred and contempt towards neighboring nations which leaves constantly open the possibilities for further misunderstandings, conflicts, and uh, revanchism. And there is also additional statement that he's making that I'm not going to quote. So it appears that actually we are still far from emancipating our pupils and our educational system from this neo-romantic idea about nation and national identity. And to conclude in a, let's say, a little, a little bit vitalist and positive spirit. One way to do so has been already set by an ambitious long-term project called Joint History Project. And it was conducted by the Center for Democracy and Reconciliation in Southeast Europe. You know, those complicated names of, of you know, NGOs. It was situated in, in Thessaloniki. And from 1998, they invested huge uh, amount of time, expertise, and money to produce different textbooks. Textbooks that can be used parallelly in all educational systems throughout the Balkans. And that doesn't mean only XU, it also means Turkey, Greece, and Cyprus. And at the end, I know this is, this is, uh, these are small letters, but I hope you can actually see how these textbooks were constructed. Uh, you have problems, uh, emerging ideologies, uh, Eastern question, Balkan wars. These are all moments where uh, various Balkan nations have conflicted views. For the Serbs and Greece and Montenegrins, the Balkan wars in 1912, 1913, it was a liberation. 
for the Turks or Albanians, it was probably, you know, ethnic cleansing from, you know, their territories, you know, and, and uh, occupation by, by the Balkanets. So in all, every lesson, basically you have uh, various sources. Particularly interesting is once we come to the uh, Balkan Wars, we have official proclamations, but we also have some newspaper articles and some intellectuals uh, 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 providing different views. And then when you come to actually the depiction of war, you have various letters, uh, diaries from both common soldiers, uh, newspaper articles uh, from their commanders. So you can see how there are differences in Bulgarian, Romanian, Serbian, Albanian, Turkish perspective. And you can s actually uh, uh, have a grasp of what is proclaimed as methodical instructions that I read five or six minutes ago. You can actually see, see how this is multifaceted, how it's, uh, it combines various perspectives, how it enables students to think critically, how it enables uh, empathy with the other side and promotes tolerance. So, you know, if, if this is my victory, then it's your defeat, but I can sympathize with, with everything and so on and so forth. However, the problem, the time, you know, the, the devil uh, is in the detail. The problem is that after all these considerable efforts, for example, uh, textbooks like this are in little or no use in Serbian education nowadays. And I'm not certain to what extent they are used in uh, other Balkan countries. Now, the reasons uh, why that, that is the case would require us to dwell uh, on the, you know, hegemonic discourse in education about the real political will to change ideological premises or to uh, promote critical thinking among the students and so on and so forth. But I think that would uh, constitute a different story and an additional story to the one uh, I told today. And maybe I'll leave that for uh, some other or maybe our next conference. So thank you.